beautiful out here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Wilderness areas are the most untrampled places that we have of nature. Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> it's the place where you could truly go and get away from society. My name's Garrett Reppenhagen. I'm the Rocky Mountain Director of Vet Voice Foundation. I came to Colorado and I fell in love with this place as a sniper in the U.S. Army uh, that fought in Iraq. If it wasn't for places like this, I wouldn't be here today. My name's Bradley Noon. I'm a 10th Mountain veteran. In my time in the service, I incurred personally a number of injuries, the most marked, I believe, being my traumatic brain injury. So this is basically the footprint of Camp Hale that we're standing in. During World War II, we realized that there was going to be a fight in the mountains and that we needed to train up some soldiers to prepare for that fight. They chose this place outside of uh, Leadville, Colorado, as, uh, as the area that they were going to train soldiers to, to go fight in the uh, Alps. The Continental Divide Wilderness Recreation and Camp Hale Legacy Act, it'll protect a large area all throughout the Continental Divide in Colorado, adding wilderness areas, recreational areas. One of the key things out of the 100,000 acres of this bill, almost 29,000 acres will be Camp Hale. And it'll create a special management area called uh, National Historic Landscape, which will be the first of its kind, which emphasizes not only on the natural beauty that's around us, but also on the history of the 10th Mountain Division and how they use this place to prepare themselves to fight in World War II. And bring some vets out and, and see what the feedback is, see what they think, and see how we run it. Coming out here into Camp Hale itself uh, and surrounding wilderness areas, it gives us a place of solitude. It gives us a place to reflect uh, on the issues we may be having, the readjustment back into civilian life. These are the headwaters of the Eagle River. What I love about the Continental Divide Recreation Wilderness and Camp Hale Legacy Act is that it's so big, that even its name is big. To my right is the Holy Cross Wilderness Area. My name is Susie Kincaid. I work with Wilderness Workshop in Eagle, Colorado. Our wildlands are disappearing really quickly. The desire for people to build here, live here, has put so much pressure on through rampant development. I think what's special about this bill is that so many diverse communities have had a voice. So we have snowmobilers here who may not have the same interests as hunters, who may not have the same interests as Nordic skiers, who also may not have the same interests as mountain bikers. And they use different types of terrain and different places, and all of that input needs to be considered. Mountain biking is uh, an incredible sport. My name is Ernest Sager. I'm on the board of directors of the Vail Valley Mountain Bike Association. Mountain bikers, we want our access. We want to be able to ride our bikes. We want to be able to recreate. And I think there's enough land and enough wilderness for everyone to really have the access that they want. We know as mountain bikers that we don't want to go out and ride everywhere. We want to ride on mountain bike trails and sustainable trails. And we want to make sure that there is land that's conserved for, for the future generations to come. To give you an idea of how all this fits together, here's Vail and the Vail ski area up here. The Copper Mountain ski area is over here. The proposed act that we're supporting is this area through here. I'm Donnie Shepchik, senior guide with Paragon Guides in Vail, Colorado. Our main activities in winter are backcountry ski touring, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing. There we go, that was fun. Today, I met with a group I've had out before on a multi-day trip. They came in kind of neophytes, and I think they've really come to respect and understand the outdoors in winter. It's really important to keep these areas protected, not only for those of us that just live here, but for other people that want to come and visit this state. It's a really amazing area. The outdoor recreation industry is incredibly important. Uh, our industry depends on this influx of people who want to enjoy the wilderness areas, 
the back country. If it was not here, I'm not sure very many of us would be here. The area that we're in right now, the heart of the Rocky Mountains, is very populated. It has huge ski resorts, Vail, Breckenridge, Aspen. A lot of tourism and travel. In Colorado, outdoor recreation accounts for $29 billion of consumer spending. And with that, it also creates 229,000 jobs, year-round jobs, most of them. One of the things that we've done in populating our mountain states is that we've built sort of huge obstacles for the, for the wildlife. They're called Interstate 90, Interstate 80, Interstate 70, Interstate 40, all the way from north to south. Those are giant barriers for the animals. So the land over I-70 will be protected. It's uh, a land bridge that goes over a large tunnel. We have to create this balance between recreational use, summer and winter, wildlife and their needs, our outdoor industry, and still maintain and steward this land that is the reason everybody wants to come here. Turkey hunting for me is a solitary hunt. I'm out here not just hunting the birds. I'm out here getting away, breathing again, getting the weight off my shoulder that I might have from my work day life, my stress. My name is Rick Seymour. I'm a United States veteran. I'm a grandfather, a hunter, and an angler. Hunting is what I've always done, and fishing. I don't do it just to go ahead and kill something, catch something. I do it for the peace and tranquility of myself. This wilderness area that is that is surrounding us encompasses part of the 660 million public land acres that we have in America. <laughs> this public land is your land, it's my land. I like it to stay that way. I use the red arrow for my practice. Um, with this bill, especially in the Camp Hale Legacy area, you have world-class hunting, the blue ribbon fishing. What more could you want? The people that come there are the tourists that, that help our economy. My own children, as an example, they take their kids to the forest where they belong, where they can go ahead and feel like that. It's so relaxing. You know, I want to see the places that I swore to defend uh, have a legacy and, and carry on for future generations. Wow! My son Ocean should have the ability to, to play and have fun in these spaces just as I did and, and his children and their children's <laughs> children. So I want to make sure that these incredible areas, these national treasures are there forever.